It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. Welcome to the program. For the first time, we have on the line Mr. Gene McVeigh is with us, and we were we we were asking Gene what we uh, what he wanted his uh, description to be on the uh, website. And uh, we settled on Republican Pioneer. Gene, welcome to Conduit News Radio. Hey, Paul. It's uh, This is a lot of responsibility being on the only program that's able to get through to all the people of Arkansas, according to uh, Governor Asa Hutchison. So I feel a lot of responsibility here. Well, thank you, uh, Gene. I appreciate that. Yeah, the uh, audience is growing and uh, certainly uh, drawing the attention of those in power. I think they know that the message uh, is getting out. And, uh, you know, we can have an argument. I mean, I'm sure they would say, well, well you know, they would attempt to, to debate us. But uh, at least there's a different point of view getting out there besides the Little Rock Marble Palace monolith, the list of talking points that tries to grow government and call it conservative. And that's what we're really fighting here. I'd love, Gene, for you to tell us how uh, you began to, you know, uh, your first reactions or your first interactions, rather, with the Republican Party here in Arkansas. Well, Paul, when I returned to Arkansas after a uh, four-year enlistment in the Air Force, it was 1965. And in 1965, we had one Republican member of the Arkansas House of Representatives. And that Republican was a uh, self-educated attorney from Mountain Home named Odie Pendergrass. Uh, now, I graduated from Mountain Home High School with Odie's son. Uh, we were friends, and so I knew Odie Pendergrass. And in 1965, I asked him what it was like being the only Republican in the House. And O.D. told me that it was lonely. Mm -hmm. He said nobody spoke to him. Nobody talked to him. They didn't eat with him. Uh, they didn't even acknowledge his existence. And this may surprise you, Paul, but there was no talk about reaching across the aisle or about bipartisanship and Nobody considered making O.D. the chairman of a powerful uh, House committee. Hmm. So that's the way things were, uh, were going in Arkansas, but at least we had one Republican in office. Wow. Wow, that is that is that's nuts. Yeah, you mentioned no one considered making the lone Republican a chair of the House committee, but they did do that with Democrats. And then they uh, then the de Democrats changing parties to keep their chairmanship. I mean, you know, it's just very, very uh, strange, uh, you know, to say the least about what's been going on in Arkansas. So, so Gene, when when you look at, I mean, you obviously have been involved for a long time. So when you look at the massive Republican majorities that we have now in the legislature, as well as the governorship, are you pleased with the policies that they're advancing and advocating? Uh, are you pleased with the speed in which we are seeing the reform that I think the people of Arkansas voted for when they threw the Democrats out of power? Well, of course not. Uh, I would like to say that uh, I was working on my private pilot's license back in 1965 and in 66 when uh, I was at the airport in Mountain Home. And Winthrop Rockefeller landed, and I believe he was in a Falcon jet. So I was able to talk to Winthrop for about 20 minutes. And that 1966 is the year that he was elected governor. The previous Republican governor rode around Little Rock in a horse and buggy. Wow. And so I want the people of Arkansas to know that the Republican Party didn't just fall out of the sky. So when I was uh, aware that we were going to have a Republican majority in the House, I was thrilled. And especially since one of my friends was going to be the first speaker, first Republican speaker, Terry Rice. Yeah, going to be, but, but that somebody never had studied mathematics, and they figured that 
if they could get 100% of the Democrats, they only needed three or four Republicans, and then they could elect the speaker that they wanted that would uh, would keep uh, pushing the Democratic agenda. And so we had uh, Davy Carter elected speaker, and, and before his term was up, he was out campaigning with Mike Beebe for Democrat. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Yeah, that's a, a certainly a, a shame. Um, I think it, 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 I've talked about this before. That was certainly a, a turning point, and it's we we really kind of haven't ever recovered. Uh, now, Senator Terry Rice is a is a great voice of conservatism, uh, you know, in the legislature. But you know, if when he was a state rep, had he been chosen as speaker as everyone thought he was going to be? Things Arkansas would have looked like a much different place today in terms of the policies that we are still, you know, struggling to enact or policies that we're trying to roll back. I mean, that was uh, the a way for the Marble Palace uh, Court, if you will, to to maintain control over the conservative reforms that people wanted. Absolutely, that that was a slap in the face to the. Uh the Arkansas voters, that's not what we voted for. Mm -hmm. And uh, to think that we have continued the, uh, the Democratic agenda, and some of the people have pointed out, some of the Democrats have realized that a, a liberal Republican governor can... Uh, pursue the Democratic agenda and get more done than uh, a conservative Democrat governor like Mike uh, Beebe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and certainly that has happened. Mm -hmm. So we're talking with Gene McVeigh, Republican pioneer uh, here in the state. Uh, Gene, I'd like to, you're a military retiree. Did you, did you, did you fly fighter jet? I mean, you're, you're a fighter pilot, right? Yes, uh, Paul. I flew. If, if you've seen the Thunderbirds, I flew every supersonic jet that the Thunderbirds flew during their uh, history. Wow! And also flew the uh, F one hundred one Voodoo, which the Thunderbirds did not fly. Wow, that's great. Um, so you're a military retiree. I wanted to know. You know, Senator Jim Hendren, who is the governor's nephew. Uh, now he's the president of the Senate. Um, he also is a fighter pilot, by the way. Um, he passed and sponsored, a, as a military retiree himself, a bill to uh, end the exempt military retirees from the state income tax. Um, in order to do it, in order to pay for it, they uh, raised tax on candy soda, digital downloads, and then, of course, we now know that there's more money going to the government. Uh, after the fact that there was so it's net tax increase in my opinion but yeah it's for the military retirees which i i didn't really oppose that i just opposed the way they they did it and i don't appreciate the tax uh increase in the end really so gene i'm just curious as a military retiree yourself i'm not a military guy uh in terms of never served um what are your thoughts on it well uh jim hendren before he was radicalized, back when he was a conservative and back when he was against Obamacare and all that, yeah, uh, Jim Hennon called me and asked me to testify for his bill that would uh, eliminate state income tax for active duty personnel. And the situation in Arkansas is it's pretty simple because of the lack of opportunity, a disproportionate number of Arkansans join the military and end up staying as a career. But while they're in the military, they change their residence to uh, Texas or Florida or Wyoming or someplace that doesn't have income tax. And when they retire, they'd like to come back to Arkansas, but uh, they're not stupid. Mm -hmm. They look at states that don't tax their pension. And so they end up having to go someplace else. So I testified, and that bill passed several years ago. 
And as far as the military pensions, there were only 15 states that taxed military pensions. And, of course, Arkansas taxes everything. So they try, they've been trying to get that uh, tax mm-hmm. removed for years. Yeah. And, of course, Asa Hutchison uh, opposed it until finally he figured out a way to to do it in a, without costing any revenue. Yeah, and that's what it was. He, he wanted to, to pay for it. He said it's not conservative to just have the government absorb the hit. It was only going to be about $13 million. And, uh, and so to pay for it, they... Uh, made the uh, I guess they gave the uh, uh, syrup industry some sort of break uh, the, because of the can- because candy and soda they increased the full sales tax on it then they gave the syrup industry a break and they created new tax on digital downloads um, all in, in an effort to pay for it and of course now you've got about eight million dollars more coming to the government when it's all said and done than it was and you know Senator Hendren claims that that eight million is is not a tax increase because it went to the Medicaid trust fund. Uh, I guess it's, it's because they saved the money or something. It's not a tax increase. It doesn't make any sense. But um, so, so Gene, I'm just curious. I mean, I'm not necessarily, you know, uh, I, I don't have a problem necessarily. I mean, if you're going to give a tax exemption, of course, why not give it to our military? You know, why not make us competitive with other states? I get all of that. I just don't understand why we had to do this tax shifting, you know, what appears to be a shell game to do it. And now, of course, it's giving more money to the government after the fact. So you, so you're saying that you supported the effort. You think it's good, uh, but I'm asking. Well, you, I, you know, here's go, what I'm saying, Paul. I, I think that the military pensions should not be uh, taxed, just like most other states. But here's here's the thing. Uh, consider the uh, the consultant that. Uh, Asa insisted on hiring at uh, twenty million dollars more than the other consultant. Yes. Or consider that uh, the gift money that Asa Hutchison is uh, blowing on taekwondo buildings and so forth. There are so many places to find fifteen million dollars in the Arkansas budget without raising taxes elsewhere. Yeah. No, I don't support raising taxes elsewhere at all. Yeah, I, I think most of our Kansas would agree with you on that. Um, let's let's talk about corruption. You mentioned general improvement funds. I mean, you you posted. We we're talking about medical marijuana yesterday, for example, and uh, all of the you know uh, what appears to be capricious nature of how they are going to award the five licenses out of eighty nine applicants. And you posted a very interesting uh, comment on Facebook. Just in jest, you said, okay, so who's going to get the licenses? And I think you said, you know, you said Doyle Webb will get a license. His wife will get a license. His sister will get a license. Jake Files and Jim Hendren will get a license. And I thought it was a, you know, hilarious comment. Maybe not everybody gets it. But but what do you think about the nature of, of you know, the good old boy system, along with all of the corruption that we're now figuring out is connected to GIF and Medicaid fraud. What's going on there? Well, uh, when Jesus taught us how to pray to uh, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, I can tell you that the temptation in the marble palace is more than than the average person can can withstand Hmm. and so people with good intentions end up going down to that little rock swamp and lobbyists start throwing money at them and then they they see other people profiting from that and they they end up going into they'll walk in the door of a committee meeting and they'll sign in and they end up getting per diem and everything and so that it turns into a uh, a big money grab, and I've I've had legislators tell me that if the if the lobbyists and the bureaucrats can figure out what they want, then they trip over themselves trying to get them get it for them. Hmm. So I'm not surprised that uh, we have that corruption, particularly in GIF, when Asa Hutchinson said there'll be no room in his budget for general improvement funds. Turns out there was a lot of room for it. Mm-hmm. And that that program should have been done away with a long time ago. 
We should have some transparency. We can't know what's going on down there. Yeah. Why Why do you think Governor Asa Hutchinson and along with the Republican Party of Arkansas were silent when all of the news was breaking last year about Senator Jake Files, uh, even after the FBI affidavit came out? Uh, uh, you know, es- essentially, you know, having the facts and the witnesses that, you know, uh, were proving wire fraud. And now, of course, he's pled guilty and he resigned. But why did it take so long? Um, and, and why didn't the governor and uh, the Republican Party that are supposed to have the moral high ground, why didn't they stand up and say, Jake, you've got to go, man? I mean, we can't have you doing this and stealing the public's money and, and taking it for yourself. Well, I think we've seen that a vote uh, for Asa Hutchinson's agenda is more important than uh, uh, ethics. And so Jake Piles was a vote for Asa Hutchinson. He was a big supporter. And I got to tell you, uh, I know Jake Piles' late father. There's nobody I ever knew who was more respected than uh, Jim Files. And Jake was raised as uh, an upright man, and I've known him for years, but he come under the uh, the marble fever, mm-hmm. and uh, we don't know. We don't know what our price is going to be. And unfortunately, un- unless until we uh, change the entire climate in Little Rock, it's not a place where I'd want to send my uh, children. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the temptation is real. I mean, you know, it's everybody's, you know, like you said, I mean, everybody's tempted in everyday life, you know, re- regardless of, you know, uh, whether or not we're going to add the Marble Palace on top of that. You know what I mean? And uh, it, it's, it's just, uh, uh, it is a very... A murky environment down there and it takes a very you know uh special um wise person to be able to navigate that and uh to to know where the pitfalls are uh, and i'm really glad that you you brought that up gene mcveigh about temptation and i'm glad that you've come on the show gene i would love to do it again uh because i think you're a wealth of knowledge i think you've been around for a long time and you've you've seen things uh and so uh, I, I really appreciate it. It's been a great interview. And could, I, I, could I say something, Paul, yes, before sir. we leave? Yes, sir. Uh, I know you get up early every morning, and we have so many people that are out there working for us. Uh, uh, Brian King, he doesn't have an interstate from his home to, to Little Rock. And we have Jan Morgan uh, crisscrossing the state. And here, so many of us are, are the silent majority. We're not doing anything. We need to do something. We need to be sharing your posts. And uh, the people we support, we need to be sharing their Facebook posts and retweeting them. And we, we can exponentially uh, help build this uh, Liberty Machine. And I'm just urging all of your listeners to get involved one way or the other. And I appreciate everything you're doing. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, Gene. It's great to meet you. We're going to uh, do this again very soon, so be safe, okay? Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Gene McVeigh, everybody, Republican pioneer. Uh, I think we're going to stick with that phrase for every time he's on from now on because uh, I love it. we got to take a break, folks. It's Conduit News Radio. I'm Paul Harrell. Back in just a moment.